Dan Mananasi Duus. Sainam Asi, everyone, for being here today, and even more importantly, Sujus Maasi for all of the work that you put into the coastal cleanup. Uh, we've been having it every year. This is amazingly the 25th year of such an effort. And I was being told uh, you probably recognize Ms. Uh, Marilyn Guerrero. And uh, she was mentioning that this happens, I think you said nationwide? Nationwide, nationwide that uh, we work in a coordinated fashion and get out there and really make a difference in each of our communities. So I know that you've put in many hours and uh, I will have Ms. Guerrero speak a little bit about the uh, volunteerism that you've put into this, the commitment that you've put into it, uh, and the time. So I'll just mention a few details. You're probably very familiar with it, but just so that those listening in, understand how big an effort this was and continues to be. It's one of our largest, if not the largest, uh, it sounds like it's the largest cleanup on the island that occurs every year. As I mentioned, it's the 25th time that this has happened, and I'm sure it will continue on for uh, the unforeseen future. It occurred this year uh, on September 21st, it occurring in September every year. And it's the number of volunteers and the amount of what you picked up that really uh, sort of boggles my mind. So on the plus side is that there are over 4,000 volunteers who rolled up their sleeves and put in that hard work, going out there in the hot sun. I'm sure it was hot that day. Most days are, and, and went out there and uh, picked up. I've been part of cleanups before. I know that it can be a really difficult task. You've got broken glass and all sorts of other things that uh, you're trying to, to pick up. And then she was sharing, uh, Ms. Guerrero was sharing that 92, over 92,000 pounds were collected. And just trying to envision that in my mind has been quite a, a stretch to understand what 92,000 pounds looks like. I guess if we put all the photographs together of all the bins and trucks, uh, we might have some understanding. Was there a, a photograph, perhaps, of when it made its way to the landfill? I don't know that they would have done that, but um, maybe you can talk a bit about the time that they put in uh, the number of bins that were filled, perhaps, and some of the sorting. I was really surprised to hear about some of the sorting that the site leaders do. You guys really commit yourselves to a lot of work on behalf of the community, and we are extremely, extremely grateful. Hopefully, we will be getting year by year to a point where we're actually creating less work for you to do. I think that would be an excellent goal for there to be less work for you to be doing. Uh, and that's where the community can be doing our part by trying to create less work for all of you. But I will turn it over to Ms. Guerrero, who has been leading the way in this effort. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Honorable uh, Kelly Titano. Uh, what do you call that? I'm really nervous. It's my first time to do this. Um, I wanted to put out a very, I really appreciate, or we really appreciate, all the efforts that our site leaders actually do. Our site leaders actually have to work the hardest during this coastal cleanup. They actually have to get up approximately like five in the morning just to set up and actually prepare for all those volunteers who come out to their sites and, uh, and also coordinate accordingly of how things will be distributed. With our site leaders, they put approximately, I think, over 200 hours of service to this coastal cleanup every year. And I have coastal cleanup meetings with these site leaders, approximately like nine meetings every year annually that's held in September. And it takes probably like four to, four to five months just to coordinate this to make this thing all possible and try to make it as smooth as possible. 
with this, the site leaders have to coordinate um, working hard with our volunteers, letting them get their data forms, sorting out all the trash at the site with recyclable items and also regular trash, metal, and also appliances. And that's to me is the hardest part at the end of every coastal cleanup that it may say it ends at 11 o'clock, but I think our site leaders will stay there until they're completely done sorting out all the trash. And providing me this data helps support make laws for our, our island and also for the, the whole United States country because this is a participation of 101 countries that participate nationally, not just Guam. And with that support, we have over 4,000 volunteers who come out, and it's our site leaders who have to deal with the 4,000 people at each of their sites. And also letting them know what is required when they come out to do this. And then also the high schools and middle schools now have always been getting service learning regarding sorting out the trash. So th this is also a community effort with the high schools and the middle schools. So I would like to make and really appreciate all the hard work our site leaders do every year that always come back out and support this in Guam International Coastal Cleanup. Thank you. So I'll go ahead and uh, ask for the certificates for those who are here today. Uh, have them get ready and, and bring them over. But I do want to mention sponsors. We have quite a list of sponsors. They provide the bins. They commit some of their employees to be participating. Um, they provide refreshments, water, uh, and various things that help make this successful all the way around. So it's truly the community, uh, or at least major portions of it, coming together. So the Office of the Governor, the Bureau of Statistics and Plans, the Guam Coast Management Program, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the Department of Public Works, the Guam Solid Waste Authority, the Department of Parks and Recreation, Haggins, is that how? Haggins Inc., Pacific Pest Control, Pacific Solar and Photo, Photovoltaic, Incorporation, I will have to uh, learn to say that a little bit more smoothly. Uh, Trash Co, Morico, EQ, WDI International Inc, Tony Romas and Capriciosa, IP and E, Pyramid Recycle, Foodies, Cherry Media, Fisheye Guam. Oh, and uh, afterwards I'll have you mention maybe a few things about Fisheye Guam and Underwater uh, World. National Park Service, iRecycle, Guam Environmental Protection Agency, University of Guam, Center of Island Sustainability, UOG, Guam EPSCOR, University of Guam, Outdoor Recreation, Guam Community College, Eco Warriors from GCC, a few more here, Marine Mania, Sea Grant Program, UOG, the Rosario Family, Association of Government Accountants, Agate Mayor's Office, the Asin Maina Mayor's Office, Inarahan Mayor's Office, Manilao Mayor's Office, Malesu's Mayor's Office, PD Mayor's Office, Talafofos Mayor's Office, Humatic Mayor's Office, John F. Kennedy High School, George Washington High School, Okudu High School, Teton High School, JFK High School, JROTC, Father Duenas High School. And there are a few others, they were here at the earlier program, but it really shows what a, a list of sponsors it takes to make an effort like this come together. Um, I guess we'll go into the certificates um, and then you can maybe mention a little bit more about uh, what happens with the sponsors and the site leaders uh, with Fisheye and Underwater World. Yeah. but. Um, Let's go ahead and I'll just read the certificate of recognition in general and then we'll give them out to specific people who have attended today. So 
the certificate has been uh, supported by all of the senators in the legislature. It is a certificate of recognition. And then it is to commend you for your participation and efforts as a site leader at the 25th Annual Guam International Coastal Cleanup, which was held on September 21st, 2019. The Committee on Rules of E. Menetrentai Cinco Na Legislatura in Guahan herein directs that this official expression of its recognition and commendations be forthwith sent on behalf of E. Legislatura in Guahan and the people of Guam. And then it is signed by our speaker, Tina Rose Munya Barnes, the Committee on Rules Chair, Senator Regine Bisco Lee the Legislative Secretary, Senator Amanda Shelton, and myself as the sponsor. So with all of that, uh, with these certificates, we are pleased to present this certificate to Justin Brown. And Peggy Arulo. Okay, I see. Next, we'd like to recognize and present a certificate to Laura Biggs. Next we have, and we also have uh, with this, I believe it comes from the Ocean Conservancy. So it's an appreciation certificate from Ocean Conservancy and then they are recognizing these same individuals. So we would next like to recognize Nicholas Sablon. Next we have, and we'd like to recognize, Sarah Hamilton. Next, we would like to recognize Rochelle Unkenko. Next, we have a certificate, and she's going to be collecting for several people. So we have a certificate for Leilani Sablon. And she's also representing uh, the University of Guam. 
and then some of the uh, University of Guam's uh, different uh, units. Center of Island Sustainability, we have Guam EPSCOR, and the Sea Grant Program. So if I can spread these out amongst you all. <laughs> I believe that's all for those that are present, but I do want to read, I think, uh, some of the other names, or, well, does it get too, too lengthy? Okay. Yeah, because we want to uh, recognize that people are putting in 200 hours, waking up at 5 a.m., and then being out there all day. We want to give them some recognition as well. Okay, so uh, just uh, for posterity, to recognize Megan Parker, A.J. Rages, Maria Luisa Bisner, Oliver Devera, Roy S. N. Agagi, Linda T. Borja, Teresa Wellman, Alexandra Garrido, Roki Rosario II, Lieutenant Colonel Ron Eisel, USMC, retired. Deline Leon Guerrero, Jenna Sanchez, Liana Sanchez, Kanapu Tolinoa, T Tolinoa, Mary Ann Pasqua, Jonathan Jimerson, Jonah Gumatautau, Eric Chong, Joni Kanga Kerr, JFK High School Air Force JROTC, Sergeant Andrew D. Smirk, thank you, uh, Master Sergeant Joseph A. Moffness, SM Sergeant Victor P. Rosario, Teton High School Air Force JROTC, Colonel Frank A. Flores, SMSGT, so uh, Ger uh, Geraldo Lund, Master Char Sergeant Donald Cruz, Kina Doreen G. Lewis, Maria Santos, Linda Trato, Francisco Palacios, Rowena Mal Malaga? Malaga? Malaga. Malaga, Carmen Agagi, Lucia Cruz, and Peggy Arulo. So quite a list. Um, I guess it's a good thing you didn't give me all 4,000. <laughs> uh, save some people some time. But again, Sainam Asi, so much for your participation. And then I wanted to uh, give Ms. Guerrero the opportunity to talk a little bit about some of the other ways that Underwater World and Fisheye provide some support. Thank you again. Uh, with the incentives, so annually, uh, the underwater world does provide an, a, a fee of $5 entrance fee when anyone participates during the coastal cleanup and that is provided to our volunteers as long as they have a t-shirt on or a photo ID of the site of where they actually participated in. And then also Sea Grill provides a five, $5 meal uh, as long as they have the t-shirt on also and also a photo ID, and that is all day until 6 o'clock p.m. on the day of the coastal cleanup. And then for fisheye, it was a free admission during uh, the coastal cleanup, and all they had to do was the same thing where they wear uh, the coastal cleanup t-shirt or also take a photo of the site of where they participated in. Uh, we also had um, Capriciosa and uh, Tony Romas also provide gift certificates 
and that is given out to our site leaders for all their hard work also as an incentive for our site leaders to come out every year and support this Guam International Coastal Cleanup. And thank you very much. Thank you all for coming out here and uh, please have a, a good rest of your day and uh, perhaps we shall see each other again next year. Let's, uh, let's come up for a group photo.